So I took a quick stop here on the Autobahn on the way to Hamburg. I'm actually on the way to Hamburg to check out a scanner that is worth more than the car I'm driving there. I thought I'll make a little video about it so people can see what kind of hardware is being used in the industry. I'm quite likely to use this scanner on a future project. That's why I'm checking, the, checking it out. So yeah, I'm not sure if I can film there yet. Uh, so once I arrive, I'll find out if this video will be uploaded. I was allowed to film, if not, then yeah. <laughs> so have fun and bye-bye. So I just arrived. Let's see how it is. So look at this. I'm at Image. 47 they own the scanner that costs 32,000 euros and a leasing rate of about 600 euros per month We're about to test it out. This is what it looks like Oh Hello there I'm back at home. I will comment the following footage that I took with my iPhone. So what's happening here is the scanner is being used. The scanner is pretty cool. It scans in real time. It has no cable. And on the screen, you can see it's green and blue. So blue is too far away. Green is perfect. Red is too close. The ideal scanning distance is 40 centimeters. So almost a half a meter. Let's keep watching. Ja schon, man braucht ein bisschen Platz drum rum. Ja. Aber ist egal, es geht ja jetzt einmal so um das. The flashing light, maybe I'll also note. Basically, it's taking, he explained, a lot of frames. Okay, makes sense. It's taking a lot of frames and keyframes. So it used, I think, a LiDAR scanner, shoots all the LiDAR with the flash. Um, and scans the 3D model. And on keyframes, when the device thinks it's necessary, it will take a photo. So the texture process is actually separate, and this you can also control separately. In this moment, it's automatic, so the flashing is coming from the mesh generation, and the photos just come randomly when the device thinks a photo is necessary to texture the object. And this flashing light can be disabled because this flashing light can be visible in the texture later on. You'll see in the software there's a feature to calculate it out, but still, yeah, the flashing isn't always good and not always necessary. So it's on in this scenario, but theoretically you don't need it. So let's keep watching. Yeah. So, and now can you say, I'm still in the project, and you can say, scan hinzufügen. So basically what he explained here, a super cool feature, you'll see it later in this video how I'm actually using this feature. You can start scanning something, flip the product or the object and scan the hidden part in it, recognizes it. So you can put this bottle on the table, scan it. Okay, the bottle is a bad example. Flip the bottle so it can scan the bottom part. It will detect what it already has scanned and add to the scan. This was a very, very cool feature of this scanner. So you can have complete scans. Unlike photogrammetry, you just got the scan and the floor is missing. It's like standing on something with this scanner. You can just flip the product, scan the backside. This was very, 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 very cool. The rückseite. Yeah. But das mache ich jetzt erstmal nicht, das machen wir später. Also yeah. Here, another very cool feature in Blender. So this is a huge hole here. Um, we did not do the secondary scan. We just left the hole and he showed me how you can fix the hole. And this was very, very cool because in Blender, this would be super annoying. So you can select the hole, which would work in Blender. You can smooth the hole. You can see how smooth this is. Like this is from a scan and this is like a perfect line. So very, very cool. And best part, it automatically fills it and you can automatically generate the texture on top of it. So it's kind of like Shift F5 in Photoshop in case you know. Um, yeah, it kind of content awares fills the texture automatically, which I thought was a very, very cool feature. So in case you've got holes, for example, chrome parts, um, yeah, you can just fill them up theoretically. 
Rückseite, genau. wir merchen die zusammen merchen, und, genau. und, und, und dann sieht das vernünftig aus. Okay. Jetzt. Aber dann siehst du schon mal, was man mit der Software auch noch machen kann. Ja, ja. Noch kennt er den. Ah, jetzt, jetzt, jetzt kennt er den. Und jetzt drücke ich nochmal drauf. So here he just showed me the feature of the object detection. So he flipped the box and let the device recognize the object in that it's flipped. So it's ready to scan the backside or the hidden parts of the box. Also right now, you see this box was a perfect example. Black is a big issue and chrome parts are a big issue. Aluminum uh, seem to work. So things like this probably are still going to work. Uh, but yeah, black, even these headphones could already be an issue. Also, by the way, once we're at it, let me go to my back pocket. Dieter was the guy who presented everything. A very, very funny guy. Uh, check him out. This video is not sponsored, nothing. I'm not affiliated, nothing. I don't profit from sales, nothing. It's really just, um, I just thought it was a very, very cool experience. Dieter was a super cool guy. So yeah, if your company is interested, feel free to hit up Dieter uh, in Germany, obviously. Yeah, but just on a side note, uh, let's keep watching the video. And I do it so here's me basically you create a project just like in blender and then basically like a gun you press go and can start scanning in real time once again no cable so this thing you can take into the forest this thing has 500 gigabytes or more depending on the sd card of storage and you'll see later in this video i think um one model is like one gigabyte so at least two three hundred scans you could do wirelessly in a forest probably more and you can just swap the sd and make more so this was a very very sick feature um because yeah it's wireless i don't even know how many scanners are wireless i have the feeling this is like the only one <laughs> but I, i'm not a super scanner guy but let's keep watching das ideale beim scan ist mal wenn du um 90 Grad zum Objekt bist, wenn du so von oben so schräg, es geht zwar auf, ja. aber dann kriegst du wieder Spiegelungen rein. Hoch, hoch geht's oder noch runter? Den Bildschirm. Den Bildschirm kann man ja auch hoch. Nee, 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 hoch. So basically he's saying, I can't flip up the screen, but he's also saying, I should scan in a 90 degrees horizontal uh, angle, not in weird craziness angles. Um, I should try to stay horizontal, but I can still, of course, move in if I have to, but basically get a flat scan to get a accurate surface. I forgot the accuracy of this machine, but it was something like one tenth of a millimeter or something, which I thought was very interesting, quite obvious, but not super obvious. It has the correct size on a one tenth of a millimeter accuracy, more or less, because obviously the surface wasn't perfectly smooth or scanned. So I kind of doubt this accuracy a little bit. Maybe if you perfectly scan one hole, you get this accuracy, but on objects like this, I'd say a millimeter accuracy but you know the size i don't have to measure this box in 3d if i would just scan a lot of stuff for 3d or for arcvis or whatever it's gonna have the accurate size and we all know that size matters no actually you learned in my video that size doesn't really matter but still very very cool feature that proportionally it's always the accurate size every scan you do if you scan some tree in the forest you'll know the size the diameter the radius, you could see this afterwards without having to measure in the force. So I thought this was also just a very cool feature to get proportions of stuff instantly. So yeah, let's, let's keep watching. <laughs> Dann bist du zu, zu weit weg, ah, okay. zu nah dran ah, okay. oder zu weit weg. Ja. Also immer im grünen Bereich ja. und dann starte mal. Äh, Achso, gedrückt halt? Ja, und jetzt kannst du loslegen. Ja. Und welche Geschwindigkeit? Du kannst ruhig schneller gehen. Okay. Schlaf mich ein, meine Arbeit. Okay. Du bist ja schneller, komm. Ja, los. schneller. Ja, kann immer. Ja, ja so, ne? Also, du siehst halt mal, was du, und jetzt die Deckel oben noch. Ja, einmal drauf, einmal drücken. Genau, muss er das erkennen. So here, uh, there was a little cut. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but the box is flipped now. And now I'm scanning the bottom side of the box with the automatic detection of the box. So it will just add to the scans. Very cool feature. Near ran, probably. Okay. Ah, yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
und los, ja. Sag mal, jetzt kann es gehen. Er sagt, ready to scan und jetzt kann es gehen. Okay. Jetzt hat er auf dem Bild leider das, das, das den Boden mit drauf. Ja, der geht aber weg. Gerade. Der geht weg, aber den kann ich gleich abschalten können. Das wird so. so, aber ich glaube, du hast das schon. Jetzt machen wir das ohne HD. Wahrscheinlich das einfach mal. Und am sinnvollsten ist jetzt einfach mal, schalte mal die Scan Nummer 1 ein. So this is the software uh, that I'm using for this device. Let me maybe tell you some things about this device, uh, about the software and the device. So this is one license, but um, infinite users can use the software, which is very, very nice. I think the software was 2000 euros or something like this. Um, <clears throat> and the cool part is it's only connected to one device. So if you get a second scanner, you need a second license but uh, 100 people can work on these scans. So a guy in the factory can scan all day, send out the data and 10 3D artists can work with one license on all the scan data from this one scanner. So just if you have a second scanner, which is quite expensive or even more than two scanners, then you'll need an extra license, which is a bit annoying, but I still thought that was a pretty fair um, yeah, model for such a device. So. Let's keep moving. Uh, maybe another little note what this uh, software basically does um, is just data prep. So it just preps up the data. It would be very annoying to do this step in Blender because this data is very, very heavy. Um, so basically from cleaning up, obviously deleting stuff, um, you can smooth stuff, almost like a sculpting tool. You can fill holes. What's pretty cool, you can even, um, you showed me an example, I didn't film it. If there's a logo you don't want, you just like click, like select the logo on the texture, just like a dot or something, and it erases the logo. Also like Shift F5 in Photoshop, so it, yeah, content aware fills this logo, so yeah. That was pretty cool. So you can just quickly erase things uh, without going through Photoshop. Um, yeah, cleaning up stuff. Oh, very, very cool. Um, this, it, you can tessellate the product. So you can select how many triangles you want in total and it will tessellate this. You can do this in Blender, but the results of this software were perfect. Like really, really, really good. So I was very, very impressed by the software. Um, the software is very rustical um, and basic, but the tools that it has work extremely well, work super easy, very fast. And the cool thing is for the scanner, you don't need a full 3D artist. You basically can train a student or someone normal to use the scanner and the software. You don't need 3D knowledge to prep this data. So this was also something I really liked about the scanner, which makes it very scalable if used on bigger projects, which actually will be the case uh, soon. Stopping again, uh, here we see the UVs in 8K. So what was pretty interesting. So the scanner takes photos on these keyframes, not every frame, but keyframes, but you can change this. So it takes constant photos. You can see what works best, but the computing power can escalate quickly. So you need a very thick PC for this data. Um, calculating textures, you kind of know with scanning maybe in general and photogrammetry, this can take very long. So the more photos you take, the longer it can take. This was an 8K texture. You see, it didn't fill the complete space. It only fills it as much as it has pixels. So if it would have higher resolution photos, it would fill more space of the texture. So I could have selected 16K, that was the maximum but the density of the texture wouldn't change. Like the vox, uh, pixel density, the DPI would not change. It would just shrink in the UV space. But how can you raise this um, texture size? A very, very cool feature also of the software, good that I remember. You can scan it just like it is, and then you take photos of the box, kind of like photogrammetry, just around the box, or you can do it however you want but they have to overlap uh, 40%, he said. So I really like photogrammetry. And you can use these photos of this high-end camera for the texture generation. So it will match the photos with its scan and use the photos as textures instead, which can be very high quality. And then you can fill out the 16K and then you can read what's on that label because if the photo has that resolution, then it will be in the texture. But the scanner, as you can imagine, is not the best camera on earth. It's for scanning. So the textures are very high quality, but 
obviously not as high quality as a full frame uh, mirrorless camera. Um, so yeah. So let's move on. The size head to day. Okay, once again, stop. Here you can see uh, the box. It's a perfect mesh. I was very impressed because, okay, I was very slow because I was doing it for the first time, but I've never seen a faster way to digitalize a real world thing than this because the cleaning up was so easy. You see the box is complete. There's no floor baked into it or something, no shadows baked into it through the flashing light. Um, it was just so easy and so quick. Um, so if you use the scanner right, this is a crazy tool. And he explained a little bit uh, where it's being used. For example, in museums, it's used a lot, but also for uh, dead people. He actually showed me the photos. They scan in dead people to have perfect data of this dead person before, yeah, I don't know, the body starts disintegrating and stuff like this. So it's basically you can freeze real world stuff um, with the scanner very easily, very quickly, and as mentioned, as a non-3D artist. Yeah. Uh, once again, uh, I'll mention this, I'm not selling the scanner. This is for me because I want to use it. Um, <clears throat> I just thought I'm going to make a video about it because a very specific topic um, I thought maybe it's interesting for you to learn about as well. So let's keep watching. Yeah, good. Let's go with the So here's pretty much the last thing he's doing is using a special spray. One can I think was 30 euros or something quite expensive. I thought if you use it a lot, but the cool part is it was pretty colorless, not completely colorless. It had a gray tone to it, but the spray paint disappears after 20 minutes, I think. So he sprayed on this black box also. It was kind of gray and it was just gone later. It just disappeared on its own. You don't wipe it off. It just goes away. So you can spray on a car, you can spray on anything. It will just disappear over time. The problem is it will be visible in the scan. As you can see how he's spraying, it's not super visible. It's not red paint or something, but it is visible. But for some weird reason, this paint helps the scanner a lot. So first he scanned this blue thing because he said this is very hard to scan stuff like this and hair very hard because the scanner goes in and it's too volumetric. But with the spray, it really handled it well, um, even though the spray is not even that visible. I don't know exactly how it works, but somehow it seems to be reflecting um, the light better. Also, you gave a good tip when scanning humans, which is not recommended because they're a bit shaky and not still. Um, hair, you should make wet or even spray this shit on your hair, which is probably cancer right on your face. But yeah, hair is also a struggle. Uh, little downside of this scanner. So I hope you liked this video. I hope this was an interesting insight for you into a very specialized topic that definitely is the future. Um, a thing that I will be using probably this year, like pretty sure, uh, in collaboration with Image47. So I won't get the scanner myself, but I'll rent it out or use it together with them when I need it. Um, so you might even profit from these scans. I'll see what I'll scan, what I'll do with it. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you like this style of video. If not, whatever. Um, see you next video.